am not a big fan of having a hard conversation. But sometimes it is necessary. And I think you know that. There are times in your life when you need to talk to someone about something that they don't want to talk about. Maybe it's a friend. And the friend is being a jerk, and you need to tell them, cut it out. Maybe it's a parent. And the parent is making a decision that they don't fully grasp what's going on, and you need to talk to that parent and say, you need to listen to me. Maybe it's a spouse. And the spouse is not doing something that they should be doing. And you need to pull them aside and say, hon, we have to talk. I don't like those kind of conversations. I don't like having them. I'm really good at avoiding them, and I'm guessing many of you are as well. Well, this week and next, we're going to talk about, well, how do you actually do this? How do you have a difficult conversation? How do you have it in a way that will have the best possible outcome? Now, I want to be clear. I'm not going to promise at the end of this you're going to go, I'm going to go and have all the difficult conversations, and it's going to be great. Not what I'm saying. And I'm not promising that with this you will win every difficult conversation. I can't do that. But what I can do is lay out in God's word, this is how we approach it. Uh, this week we're going to be focusing a lot on just laying a groundwork of how to approach it. There'll be some practical things, but most of that we'll focus on next week. And you already see the two big things that I'm hoping you come out of this with. If you remember nothing else, remember this. If you're going to have a hard conversation, you need to love the truth, and you need to love the person. <clears throat> And this is really, really difficult. Because as Christians, we tend to lean one way or the other. We tend to either love the truth and fail to love the person, or we love the person and we fail to love the truth. And my guess is that when people have had difficult conversations with you, you know this. You've been with people that love the truth. And they tell it as it is. And maybe every single thing they're telling is absolutely true, but they don't love the person. You know what we call a person like that? A jerk. Yeah, love the truth. If, if you think that as we go through this, I'm telling you to not love the truth, no, that is that, no. Love the truth, but you also need to love the person. On the other hand, then you come over here, and maybe you love the person so much that you look at what they're doing and you go, you know what, if I have this difficult conversation with them, it's going to hurt them. And I, I don't want to hurt them, so I'm just not going to do it. What you're doing is you're loving the person so much that, they're, that you're not loving the truth. And this person is hurting themselves, but you're going, ah, it's fine, I love that person too much, it's okay if they're hurting themselves by doing this thing. You need to have both. You need to love the truth, and you need to love the person. And, as I said, we tend to lean one way or the other. If during this week and next week you find yourself saying, yeah, pastor, that's right, but what about <clears throat> whack yourself? Because that is your sinful nature saying, I'm going to keep on leaning the way I want to lean. Also be very careful, because this is the kind of sermon where your sinful nature will say, oh man, I really wish this person was hearing this right now. Go ahead and whack yourself if you start thinking that too. Because maybe that person does need to be reminded to love the truth or love the person. That is absolutely true that they might need to. But you know, you can't control someone else. I know, this is a hard thing to grasp. You cannot control someone's actions. You cannot control another person's thoughts or their attitudes. All you can do is control you. And so, take this to heart for yourself. Instead of thinking about that other person. Help you learn how to have these difficult conversations. If you're going to have a difficult conversation, first off, make sure your teeth are in so you can talk right. Um, yeah. Watch yourself. Very carefully. We're going to start with loving the truth. Why should I love the truth? Well, if you're a Christian, the first reason is just because God tells you to. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Just as I determined to bring disaster upon you and show no pity when your fathers angered me, says the Lord Almighty, so now I determined to do good again to Jerusalem and to Judah. So this is from the book of Zechariah, and this happens after the exile. 
So God had chosen a special people. Israel, he had said, this is what you do. Worship me. And the people of Israel turned their back on God. God sent warning after warning, come back, come back. Until finally God said, fine. I'm going to send an army, and they're going to wipe you out. And the survivors are going to take you to exile. And he did. And that's what he's talking about here. I determined to bring disaster upon you and show no pity. But then 70 years after that, he brought those survivors home again. And God says, now I've determined to do good again. I want to show you that love. Do not be afraid. So he says, I brought you home. Now this is what you do. These are the things you are to do. Speak the truth to each other. And render true and sound judgment in your courts. God says, I want you to speak the truth. And he uses that example of the court system. If you've ever been involved in the court system, you know that truth is really, really important. If you lie as a witness, um, it's not going to go well for you if you get found out. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now, that vow has changed over time, but it's still, you're going to speak the truth. The judge cannot render good in some judgment if he's basing it on a lie. He cannot make sure the guilty are proclaimed guilty and the not guilty are proclaimed not guilty if he doesn't know the truth. So you know this. The truth is really, really important. God continues, do not plot evil against your neighbor and do not love to swear falsely. I hate all this. God's pretty extreme. He says, I hate it when you don't speak the truth. Again, the word of the Lord Almighty came to me. This is what the Lord Almighty says. The fast of the fourth, fifth, seventh, and tenth months will become joyful and glad occasions and happy festivals for Judah. During the exile, there was a new tradition that was born out said, we are so sad that we're not home. We're going to fast. We're not going to eat during these months. God says, yeah, but now you're home. I'm going to turn those sad occasions to joyful occasions. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. God just says it outright. Love, truth. But that means you've got to know what truth is. You can't love something that you... Well, you can't love something you don't know, but it makes it really hard. Well, truth in the Bible, uh, in the original language, in Hebrew, the word is emet. So if you, if you have a friend named Emmett, his name means truth. And, and the word means solid, like a rock, like a boulder that you can stand on. The word in the New Testament is aletheis. It's a Greek word, and it means giving full support. The picture is of a father holding a newborn infant. That that is steady and safe. The idea for both is real. That this is reality. That's what truth is. It's not a matter of opinion. It's not a matter of emotion. It is reality. And that's why if you're having a hard discussion, you need to know the truth. My guess is that you've had some hard conversations that were based on opinion or emotion. And those are some of the hardest conversations to have. Because it's just your opinion, man. And, and that's all the argument is then. I'm having a hard discussion. And if it's based on an opinion, it's kind of pointless to have that hard discussion. It can be fun to have an argument that doesn't matter. Who would win in a fight, Gandalf or Dumbledore? Gandalf. Anyways, but it, it's kind of fun to have those pointless arguments. But if it gets to the point that it is now a difficult conversation, if I bring up Dumbledore and someone flies off the rails, this is a terrible thing. Okay, you know what? That is a matter of opinion. It is not worth getting that worked up over it. It is fun, and if the second it stops being fun, it's, just, it's not worth it. That's not the point. You need to base these discussions on something that is real. Otherwise, it's not worth having that discussion. That's really, really important, because when you have those discussions, they can get very emotional. I don't want it based on emotions, but it can be very emotional. I know people that when they argue, they start crying. That's just because that's how the emotions come out. And it is so easy if you're the other person to just dismiss it. You are way too emotional. What is going on here? Back off. Now, if it's a matter of opinion, it's so easy to throw and say, I'm not going to pay attention to it. But if it's based on reality, I saw you do this thing. This thing is wrong. It needs to stop. This thing is something that is happening in your life, and it is hurting this person over here. It needs to stop. 
if you're basing it on reality, then it's a lot harder to argue about. Because then it's just, this is what is happening. What are we going to do? Now, I want to be fair. When you have these discussions, it will not be like a sitcom, where you're going to have a hard discussion, and then at the end of the half hour, everything is going to be great, and everything will be normal again. But what happens is when that other person goes home, if it's a matter of opinion, it's so easy to toss out. Ah, oh, that person's such a jerk. But if it's based on reality, then they have to deal with it. And they might still throw it out, but then they're throwing out reality. They're not throwing out just your opinion. That's why truth is so, so important. In fact, we heard in our second lesson, to the elder, to the chosen lady and her children, and this is John's way of addressing a church. Uh, maybe if you've ever been on a boat, you know that boats sometimes are hers. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a geek, I'm a Trekkie. Star Trek, the Enterprise is always a she. Um, this is a picture of a church, the chosen lady and her children, the church and the people who belong to it. And not I only, but also all who know the truth. Because of the truth, which lives in us and will be with us forever, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son, will be with us in truth and love. This is one of the cool things. Truth is very rarely alone in the Bible. If you look in the context, there's almost always something with it. Truth and love. Grace, mercy, and peace. Uh, in, in Zechariah reading, it said, love, truth, and peace. So yes, love the truth, love what is real, but don't stop there. Know that this truth is rooted in something much deeper. <coughs> I have to look ahead to remember what the next thing is. Now, what is truth? I said reality. And that is absolutely true. But maybe you've had this discussion with someone where they think one thing and you think another, and you both think it's real, and it's not a matter of opinion. It is one of the best things in the world, and one of the worst things in the world, that we now have these magical computer boxes that you can stick in your pocket. Maybe you have one. It's called a phone. It's one of the best things in the world when you're having this stupid argument. Oh, you know, Sean Connery starred in Dragonheart. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. Look it up online. Look, he starred in Dragonheart. It's so easy to do that kind of thing, and yet there are some things that are a lot harder, or there's a lot of misinformation out there where you can find opposing viewpoints what, what is better here? And so what is the reality that you're basing this on? Jesus tells us, <coughs> sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Jesus says, if you want to know what reality is, you need to read the Bible. And that's going to explain it. And that's why, why not? You need to know the Bible. You need to know what it says. And you need to grow in that knowledge. You know nothing right now? Awesome! You got a great place to start. You know a lot? Awesome! You got a great, great place to grow from. But as you get to know the Bible more and more, you'll see, wait a second, this verse speaks to this thing over here, and this verse speaks to this thing over here, and you start to know this reality, and so when you start speaking to someone, particularly if they're Christian, you just lay out the verse and say, this is what the Bible says. Now the person might fight that. They might say, that's just your interpretation. Well, one, it's a good reason to know the Bible well enough to know whether or not it's your interpretation or if that's actually what the Bible says. But two, then just you lay out the verse and say, that's what it says. You just have to deal with it. This is not my opinion. I did not write the Bible. I've been having a discussion with someone over the last week where I said bluntly, if I wrote the Bible, I wouldn't have included that. My sinful nature does not like that verse. But there it is, so I need to go with it. Here it is. And if that person says, no, I don't want that, well, then you're dealing with someone who is now denying the Bible, and now it's going to change the conversation a little bit. But you go back and say, this is what reality is. This is what it says. Go back to that truth again and again and again. <clears throat> Jesus is really insistent on this. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. If I do not love the truth, this is what Jesus says to me. 
if I prefer a lie, if I prefer something that isn't real, I'm now siding with the devil. That's really, really dangerous. The devil is not the winner in the war. If I'm lying, if I'm loving a lie, I'm doing the same thing that Satan did way back in Genesis 3 in the Garden of Eden. As Satan whispered to Eve, oh, you eat that forbidden fruit, you will not surely die. Now maybe you've noticed this, but Eve is no longer alive. Satan lied. That is his language. I want to love the truth. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. This is how you love the people around you, by loving the truth. This is from a fairly famous chapter that begins, love is patient, love is kind. If I do not love the truth, I cannot love the people around me. That's really hard. Dear children, not us, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This also shows that, love, that truth is not a matter of philosophy. It's not a matter for guys with really big beards that are going, boy, it's truth. But if you love someone, you're going to act it out. I'm doing this in reality. I'm really spending time with you. I really care about you. I'm going to show it by, by doing things with you or speaking with you because you matter to me. Again, reality. And if I put all that together, I'm in a really dangerous place. There are a lot of lies that I prefer because lying is easier. The truth is often really, really difficult. I prefer the lie that says, you do you. Even if the you doing you is taking you into hell. I prefer saying you do you because change is difficult. I prefer the lie. And that means that I'm on the devil's side. Now if you're one of those people that tends to err on, I love people more than I love the truth, this is a chance for people like us to repent. Say, Father, forgive me. I know the truth and I just, I don't care. Or maybe I know where to find the truth and I don't want to look because I'm afraid of what it's going to say. If you've been here for a while, you already know what the next thing I'm going to say is. When your sin strikes, when that guilt grows, you go to Jesus. I have not always loved the truth. But the truth has always loved me. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is real. This is the reality. That Jesus knew you. He knew how often that you prefer the lies and he said, I still love you. Jesus says, for the law was given through Moses... Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So often when we have difficult conversations, it's because we need to hear the law. But the bigger truth is gospel. It is true that I am a sinner. It is true that Jesus died for me. It is true that Jesus has forgiven me. And each one of you can say that. Yes. Jesus died for you, and this is reality. You are forgiven this is reality. You are a king then, said Pilate, just a few hours before Jesus dies. Jesus answered, you're right in saying I'm a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. So Jesus reaches out and says, I'm here to tell you the truth. Yeah, you're a sinner. I love you. I give myself for you. You have life forever. I died for you so that you would never die. That's reality. And you were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. This is the truth. I want you to love it. If you want to have a hard conversation, this is how you do it. You start by loving the truth. If you don't love the truth, the hard conversation probably isn't worth having. Because then you're having a hard conversation based on opinion or emotion. And it's fine to have opinions, it's fine to have emotions, but let's not have hard conversations based on that. Let's base these hard conversations on what is real. 
while also loving the person. We'll talk about that next week. Amen. Let's stand. And now the peace of God that is better than anything you can understand will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Till we return.